Welcome to Call Your Hits, a Storm Riders Airsoft podcast. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Today, Pat and I will be going over a topic that we actually covered many years ago when we first were starting the podcast. I think it might have been episode 10 or 13, something like that. Which is and, way longer ago than at least it feels for me. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. So I feel like, yeah, a couple of years ago, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, yes, it has been. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's hard to believe, like, how, I mean, it's 160 something episodes, right? And like, it's we've taken breaks as well so like it's a longer it's yeah anyways so without getting too far into it i think uh, that's what we're going to be doing today before we I'm dive into go the get episode, my cane. <laughs> yeah before we dive into the episode i just want to say today we had our 24th registrant for um operation uh, ams iron horse uh, so we now have two full squads of Storm Riders Foreign Legion. So 12 players per squad. Uh, we have squad one, which is going to be led by uh, Lazy Bear, Sam, uh, as squad lead, and myself as RTO. And uh, squad two is going to be led by Jimmy and Chris as RTO, uh, who are Nomads 1 and 2. So we've had them on the podcast before. They're friends of the show. They're um, Chris definitely is active on the Discord. I think Jimmy's a bit of a Luddite when it comes to that kind of stuff. But that's okay. <laughs> um, they are two uh, former U.S. Um, army Speak. members uh who have done a lot of different milsim and they're really um share a lot of the same values that we have around like educating players and working with everyone and giving everyone the support that they need in order to you know be able to have fun and do the things that they want to do leaving no one sort of behind to fend to themselves so it's going to be a really cool inclusive space for everybody on both squads uh and i'm just i'm just so thrilled i mean it's it's crazy to think you know that we started this discord on a whim a few years back and, you know, three years ago or whatever. And now we're going to iron horse with two full squads and more, more importantly than that too, or not more importantly, but I think equally important is not that we have 24 people and we have our two squads, but we have our platoon leader who is Matt Kruger, who is a, a friend of the show who's been on, he's the owner of big red airsoft LLC. Uh, he's going to be our platoon leader. So it's, he's a guy I know he's friendly with the players in Colorado who know him very well. Uh, he's worked, uh, helped out Matt with some stuff. I know Pat, some of your parts came from him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've got, I've not, have not had a chat with the dude. I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah. And our, 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 our overall commander, Rich, uh, I've had conversations with him. Um, Sam has had conversation with him. He actually has been putting me on the email distribution list for their current, uh, AMS event, AMS Liberty, which is happening very shortly so that I could get like inside information as to what some of these documents look like, what might be inf important for our players to know before they go in, emails not to miss, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just been really setting us up for success. Like we are going to go there. And I think I've mentioned this before, like I'm not looking for any special treatment. Like I'm not some big YouTuber and I'm not going to show up and like swing the, you know, uh, swing my stick around as, as they say, and try and get special treatment. It's not at all what I want. What I, what is really important for me is that we collectively have the best possible opportunity, the best opportunity to engage with the content, you know, do missions. If we are, if we're tasked to do them, get the ability to do them. If the, indeed we are able to, if we're in the right place to coordinate as well as we can and contribute as much as is possible for us as a group. Um, and we're definitely going to get the opportunity to do that. And that's very exciting. I mean, like as anyone who's listened to even a couple of our episodes probably has figured out, like Phil likes to be organized about this stuff. Um, yeah, well. So, you know, like the fact that everyone's sort of on the same page and everyone has their stuff organized about like, you know, uh, getting, I guess, getting to play with a group of people who all are on the same page about, we all want to be here. We all want to play. We all want to have a fundamental understanding of the gameplay so we can contribute as positively as possible is just Definitely. super awesome. Um, I also want to say like, you know, you mentioned that, uh, the, one of the guys is, you know, comparatively a bit, I guess, less tech savvy earlier. And it turns out you can do 160 episodes of a podcast with only one person who knows how computers work. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, I uh, I recently had the uh, the grim task of editing a uh, a photo file just like very very badly uh and 
I, uh, I showed it to a couple of my friends who are artists just because I was like, I, I feel like you guys don't have enough tools to make fun of me here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, but, <laughs> but I mean, that's a fair point and I, I'll take that, but yeah, so I'm, I'm obviously like, we're, we're really organized. We're trying to get that stuff off the ground, make sure that we're, you know, uh, and I mentioned this, I think in, in a previous episode, like we, we've got some stuff going on. Anyways, it's very exciting. I never in, my wildest imagination thought that we'd have 24 players going to Iron Horse with us or well, 22 plus John and myself. Um, yeah, that, is, that is hella cool. Like <laughs> So it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. So really good stuff. Very excited about that. Um, so yeah. And uh, hopefully we will have some podcast episodes with, uh, that are more specific to AMS with some special guests. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, keep an eye on this space as they say. And uh, yeah. So for today's episode, we are going to talk about sidearms. Uh, many years ago, Pat and I talked about our views on sidearms, like what we found useful with them, how we carried them, some overall concepts. Um, since that time, my sidearm setup has not changed at all. However, Pat's sidearm has changed, his setup has changed, uh, and I think our views also have changed over them. Uh, so I thought it would be a really good idea for us to do a bit of a retrospective and, and see, like, what do we still agree with in terms of uh, of sidearms? Like, what what did we enjoy, um, or what do we enjoy? What do we still think is true? Um, I love it when and, past Pat leaves me things yeah. to talk about. <laughs> well, and I, th I think it's it's continuing this sort of trend that we have for our our content and sort of our motto, which is that you have to revisit your assumptions, right? And I think for me, um, over the last little while, I definitely have revisited some assumptions. I've talked about it on the, on the show before, but I, you know, we'll talk about it again today. Like well, definitely like revisited some assumptions about sidearms. And I think that that's uh, something that we're talking about, right? Totally. I mean, like we work really hard to not stay completely static on like ideas and approaches to airsoft. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, one <laughs> One of the obvious ones is definitely there's a podcast episode where I was like, HPA is cool, but I don't think I'll ever get into it. Like, I guarantee yeah. that exists. You can you can go find an audio clip of me saying that sentence. Like, yeah, Matt, get on that, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and clearly I have changed my mind, um, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, the uh, the sidearm situation is definitely for me, not what it was, you know, four or five years ago. Yeah. And it's interesting because it definitely from a setup standpoint, it's the same for me, but I think my, my perception on it has maybe shifted a little bit in, in a couple of different ways. I think firstly, like, I think there's a lot of different reasons why people carry sidearms, uh, especially now talking to people on the discord, which we did not have the first time <laughs> that we recorded this episode. Yeah. I mean, that, that um, has widened our, uh, our perspective on airsoft a lot, just because we've gotten to talk to so many yeah. people with so many disparate backgrounds and skill sets for the game, which has been yeah. wonderful. And there's, there are people who are like, well, I need a sidearm now because I run an LMG and I need something that I can use when I enter a building or I run a DMR and like a legit, like high powered DMR. So, you know, not, not to say yours is not high powered, but there are guys out there running like two jewel DMRs or whatever. I mean, right. And it, yeah. One of the things that's relevant in terms of talking about stuff that's changed with my kit from when we recorded that previous episode is that previously I was running a, uh, AEG at what was for our field, like, yeah, definitely not two jewels, but for our field was DMR velocity. So I had a mm -hmm. minimum engagement distance, which meant I had to carry some sort of secondary thing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, in fairness, like at the time my tornado was still working and there was sort of an argument that that was, <laughs> if you are close yeah. enough that I cannot shoot you with this, I will just throw this. At you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, but, um, also at the time I was running a, a Glock, uh, 17 by Tokyo Marie. Um, sorry, I had a brief moment where I couldn't remember what numbers were. <laughs> um, but uh, that obviously is uh, no longer the case if you're listening regularly. Um, I have switched back to a PX4 because I like tiny guns. Um, there's one for the bingo card. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, also because I've really come to the conclusion that as long as you're comfortable shooting at the form factor on your sidearm, probably doesn't matter mm -hmm. um there are only a small number of sidearms where you're getting like a practical benefit or hindrance uh so if you're running a gas blowback pistol as your sidearm and it has uh you know a a standard magazine like you know uh you're 
probably basically running the same thing. You can upgrade them, you can tune them, you can tweak them. But like, if you're running it on propane and you're not making any modifications to it, uh, all Maru pistols are basically equally good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I know that was when I upgraded my pistol, my sidearm many, many years ago, even before the podcast. Like that was where I wanted to go back to. We had, you know, those Franken gun KWA KSC <laughs> USB 45s, and I had bought like a really cheap like 1911. And then, so fundamentally, I wanted go to go back to a Tokyo because they were just basically sort of a gold standard that I could like, hey, I can run this as long as I keep it lubed, it's going to work fine basically forever, which has been true. Um, I have done no maintenance on my sidearm. I've used it. I mean, how many shots have I put that through that thing since I bought it? I mean, I don't know, probably if I had to guess, I would say probably less than a thousand, definitely less than a thousand and that's probably, sort of, you know, several hundred maybe, right? Like that sort of highlights what I think is probably the biggest change for us, which is, uh, how much we view the sidearm as an important or critical part of your kit, especially if you're running. Uh, as we both are at this point, um, primarily stuff that's not uh, in the DMR range. So, like, I don't have an MED. I'm, my M27 uh, definitely can reach out and uh, and talk to somebody, but uh, I'm not running it at our field's DMR limits. Yeah. Simply because, um, I mean, it's a HPA gun. I could do so easily, but it's a pain to have the MED, uh, and it limits me for uh, a lot of the like casual shift between play things like for a, a scenario i might actually run it as a dmr i might bump it up to those limits and and take the um the drawbacks that come with it but for a game where you know if i go out on a saturday half the games i play or more are going to be on small fields where the med is genuinely totally. a huge hindrance um it's just easier and i like it's, i don't have to swap spring it's very easy to do just check box come carry on yeah and let's be real like you're never going to play a scenario that you're not running so like the odds of you bumping up to dmr is like very small yeah there is that drawback as well like you know but um, i think i think that's a totally fair point i think and we had had this conversation before like how especially at our field like if your med is 50 feet like you basically can't leave your spawn if you're only playing like a single field game like if you're playing you know just in the in the village or yeah. just on the road like it's it's pretty it's pretty limited right yeah, i mean if you're if you're playing just on the road field i think a 50 foot med means that you can leave your spawn zone for like 10 or 20 feet and then mm -hmm. you're like all right this is my uh loa i'm just gonna stay here y'all have fun yeah <laughs> yeah so i definitely like i and i would agree like i think at that time especially in the years even the years leading up to that i viewed the sidearm as like integral part of kit I remember like during COVID, during lockdown, just doing tons and tons and tons of like sidearm transitions and stuff. And like, realistically, the amount of times that I've had to draw my sidearm in a hurry in a game because I'm like, I'm in a crap situation is really quite low. Like it would, they fit on one hand, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, and I, and to be honest, and I had this meant, and I'm, we've had this conversation on the podcast before and Matt corrected me on this. My mentality was it's never faster to draw your sidearm than to reload. Right. So I'm always going to reload my primary until it's not true, until you're in a situation where I'm trying to do a reload. I screwed myself up because of whatever reason, tangle in my sling, whatever. There's a guy bearing down on me. And the only thing I can do is have the presence of mind to just dump what I'm doing, draw my sidearm and shoot at him and very luckily get him before he gets me. That was like that was like Pele scoring that golden goal. Like It's just like it's never, never, ever going to happen again. But to me crystallized that you know what maybe you're not as right about the whole sidearm thing as, as you did and so this is not to say that i that made me change my mind on whether or not the sidearm was more or less critical but i'm like that happens but at the same time like that almost never happens right yeah i mean like i um i'm definitely the sort of player who like looks for excuses to use their sidearm or who has in the past but yeah last season uh, and I think honestly, the season before, um, no, it just would have been most of la last season and some of the season before, but not the whole, I didn't run a sidearm. Um, yeah. you know, last season, the only sidearm I owned was the PX4 and I just hadn't gotten around to buying a holster for it. Yeah. Um, I actually got a new holster for it recently. Um, you know, uh, it's a Serpa and like, I'm aware of the, the drawbacks to those for real steel shooting, but I 
don't find that they exist for airsoft particularly. We don't shoot real steel, we shoot you airsoft. Know. So who yeah, cares? like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put holes in myself with it even if I do have an issue and I haven't ever. So knock yeah. on wood, that'll continue. But that's a just we can talk about that in a second. But I think you're right though. Like I can't sh- actually I can't remember the last time I saw you wielding um a sidearm that wasn't in your basement, right? Like or, yep. or some or one that someone had handed to you on the field to check out. Like I can't I can't remember you in a game. The last time I saw you in a game with your sidearm out. I think if I really rack my brain, it was some sort of like winter game. Cause I think yeah, you were wearing a, like a, like a hat, like one of your, like your, your there's, toque there's or a, stocking cap as. Yeah. Yeah. There's a photo from the last, like, I guess it would have been the last like Stalingrad that we played um, of me using the PX4, the previous PX4 that I owned. <laughs> um, and, I couldn't for the life of me tell you why I was using my sidearm rather than the primary. Um, if I had to guess, like I was just, it was end of the day and I was down to, I have 12 BBs and they are in yeah. the sidearm. Yeah. Um, I do remember that the jacket I was wearing had um, like internal mag pouches and that I was keeping okay. one of the PX4 mags that I had or probably both of them actually, uh, one in each of the two uh, large side pockets so that they were warmed by my body heat so that they would actually work in the cold. I definitely remember <laughs> one earlier, like 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 earlier than that. I think it was it was maybe it might have been that winter game that we played where you were in the village and you like you slipped on ice and you fell on your ass, which was terrifying but also hilarious uh, uh, in retrospect totally but like I, like I remember seeing you like and I'm I, I might have seen it in the footage actually. I was carrying the I, like. You were, like, the you were like when I um uh, was it the scorpion? I, I don't even remember. Anyways, we're not gonna. I don't. We don't need but, to fig, try and figure yeah, out. But yeah. yeah, it's been a while like since I've seen you like wielding uh, a sidearm like that. And I think that 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 speaks to the kinds of situations that we feel it's necessary to draw, which is generally going to be like by and large emergency. Like I yeah. need BBs in my hands. Yeah, like I mean right? something just just talking to the issue of like it being faster or not like um running a dmr even the primary use i got out of it was like situations where i was prone and someone approached me from like an oblique angle and it was quicker to um grab the sidearm which i often like when i was dropping prone for uh for a protracted period using the dmr i often took out and laid next to me so that i could access it quickly so that i could just sort of roll over and shoot someone with it Mm -hmm. um and that definitely happened a few times at Redcliffe because Redcliffe had a lot of areas that allowed for people to like go off into the woods and flank me. Um, Frontline tends to be a little more linear and there tend to be, you know, three or four of you guys directly between me and the other players. If I'm providing that support. Yeah. Um, And more and more over the last five years, it's been sort of like, well, we have a limited number of storm riders. So Pat needs to be further up the field. Um, simply because we need more people on that primary line of guys. Um, Not to mention that front line is also tends to be like faster. So if you put your sidearm down and then it's time for you to go, like, are you going to have enough time to pick it up and reholster and move on? Like my experience has, because I've done the exact same thing that you're describing either with a a spare mag um, or with a sidearm. I remember doing that on like one of the fields where it's got like, it's got the boardwalk, but it's got tall grass on either side. So I'm crawling along the board rock and I get to the end and I'm going to be prone there for a while because I've got a good line of fire, but I'm really well concealed. And so I've got my replica, but I've got my, uh, like my sidearm or a mag in front of me just waiting. But again, the, the issue is that when I get up, my primary concern is picking up my sidearm as opposed to just booting it which is yeah. what i what it should be right so yeah, it's, it's it becomes not an ideal. inefficiency um, yeah in some ways there and like other than that my sidearm you know across my airsoft career i think existed a lot for like being used for fun or being used because my primary actually had some sort of issue definitely um as that has gotten less and less common because i've gotten better and better at teching it's become more and more just a cool thing i have yeah um but like in terms of the um, you know, the issue of like it being faster to reload. Most of the reloads I do at, um, at frontline are admin reloads. Yeah. Um, partly because we're playing a lot of really short games. So it's like, yeah, I've shot the 20 BBs, hundred BBs. I'm going to shoot 
during this game. My mid cap is 130. Mm, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so mostly the sidearm has then been a tool for me for, you know, swapping to when I'm doing sort of CQB stuff. If I have to clear a building, I'll swap to the sidearm. And that's more of a uh, courtesy thing in the sense that like, yeah, the rules say I can shoot you from fairly close with my replica, but like most people would probably rather I shot them with the pistol if I'm 15 feet away. Most definitely, yeah. Um, you know. And also just a manipulation thing. Like I, for me, it's like, I don't have an MED either, but when I poke around, I always think about like going around into the the, two, the old two story, like on the first floor, coming around that corner. Like the idea of just being able to hold my pistol up basically to eye level and poke both out really quickly, you know, and just bang, bang, right? Like it's just, it's much easier to manage. But like, yep. again, the amount of times that that happens is so comparatively so low. Uh, and most of the time, well, historically, I would have thrown a grenade. Now, you know, whether my grenade works is sort of 50 50. Um, yeah, I definitely but, yeah. would have said um, that these were a critical piece of kit 10 years ago, five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I think they're very much like my PX4 is one of my favorite airsoft luxury items. I mean, obviously, all airsoft items are luxury items, but like, luxury for airsoft um you know i mean last year I, I bought a grenade instead of buying the holster because that was what the the budget was either of the two but not both mm -hmm. uh and i didn't regret that and i still don't um you know i mean i've spent the last couple of weeks uh playing with the you know the px4 and like how i'm running it and tinkering with that because it's cool to get to do that again and i do want it to be as practical as possible when i'm feeling it like if i need it and i'm using carrying it i want to be able to use it as well as i can mm -hmm. uh, but like i you know i think they're more practical than the grenade launcher was for me you know, if you live somewhere where you can get like tag rounds tagging rounds and stuff then awesome but that's not canada yeah. <laughs> um you know um i think there are other things that i could do for a sidearm that are probably you know, arguably better ideas than the PX4. Like I, I, I joke a bunch that I'm a big enough dude to carry like an MP5K as my sidearm, and that probably would be better. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, like I think there's if you're if you wanted to carry a sidearm because it's cool. I think we've talked about this before, and I think this opinion has not changed. Like GBB sidearms in airsoft, like GBB replica sidearms, are super cool. Like the idea of like putting a mag in racking the slide like that tactile experience that you have from a gbb um sidearm you, you don't get from anything else in the same way other That's than why people think that gbb r's are cool because you have that like realism factor it's it's cool guy etc yeah, but it's very simulationist and like you know it for want of a better way to put it feels badass yeah totally and i think that that's totally cool i mean again i run a sidearm most days just because it's it's part of firstly it's habit like I, I you know like i'm you i'm accustomed to always having it on me when i play but the vast majority of games i actually don't end up using it like it goes into the holster and it comes out and i've said that before but that doesn't mean that i don't think it's value added because in situations where i need it i need it um it's just those i i think this is one thing that i've learned over the years is like same thing when you're talking about like admin reloads for years and years and years, we we're doing speed reloads all the time, all the time, dumping the mag out and stuff like that. And the amount of times that that actually comes up in reality is so, it's kind of like if you are, I, I don't know, um, depending on the age group, that might not be a thing. But I remember when I was in school, one of the things that was taught to kids is stop, drop and roll. If you ever catch fire, you have to stop, drop and roll. And that left me with a very unrealistic expectations for how often I would be on fire as a, as a human being. This is the uh, the quicksand problem, right? Kids who grew up in the yeah. 90s, right? Every single movie from the 90s has quicksand. Like, just all the time, hero must overcome quicksand. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> the amount of times that it comes up is, like, very, very limited. And so it's it's a similar thing. Like, you know, and I mean, I'm joking around here, obviously, but, like, realistically, like, you're doing these speed reloads all the time. But actually, 80% of my reloads that I do on the airsoft field are going to be admin in some way, in the sense that I'm not actually taking fire at the time. Like, I've got time and opportunity to take the mag out, put, put the new mag in, index the other one back where it needs to go, or put it in a dump pouch or whatever. The amount of time that my mags end up on the deck now is very low. 
So I was doing all these drills for speed reloads, and that's not a bad thing. It's, it's just it's a useful not, skill. It's yeah, just not but the it's just most yeah, common exactly. One. <laughs> and same thing with sidearm like transitions and stuff like that. Like, is it a bad skill to have? Like, obviously not. But the amount of times that drawing my sidearm in a hurry has come up in airsoft games, like like I said, I can count it on one hand in the in the same number of years. Right, that one time I shot I shot Jason Terry with my side, and I remember it, and I remember his name. That should tell you everything you need to know because I don't keep track of the players that I shoot on any regular basis. But that was so significant and so special that I can still remember it. So, like that situation is one in you know, hundreds. <laughs> I'm still glad that I had the muscle memory to draw my sidearm and use it in this particular case. Great stuff. But the reality is, it doesn't come up as often as I, as I thought it would. So similarly to what you were saying, like, would we say today that it's a critical piece of kit? No. Is it cool? Is it fun? Absolutely. Don't get us wrong. That's not what we're saying. But it's not as critical as maybe you would have thought several years ago. Similarly to having that skill set of drawing your sidearm in a hurry, like dumping your primary, drawing your sidearm is not as critical of a skill as, you know, being able to properly use your sidearm and all that stuff, right? And I mean, I think part of it also is that you know, um, I these days I tend to think of it in sort of a like, so if I'm talking to a player who doesn't have a whole lot of gear, what advice am I giving them? Because like, I mean, if you have three AGs and you're like, ah, should I get a sign? Yes, why not? Right? Like, yeah, you know, 100%. Um, you know, it's a cool piece of kit. You have the stuff you need to play. Yeah, do it. Uh, if you're still on the, like, how do I budget for the basic, like, most critical pieces of my kit, you know, so, um, you know, currently in Canada, a PX4 um, secondhand, but relatively new is, you know, $230, uh, which is definitely the price of a really good pair of hiking boots. Um, yeah. Comfy feet and not breaking your ankles on our, the rough terrain in places we play is way better than a sidearm. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent agree. You know, or good eye pro that doesn't fog up as much. Or yeah, like, absolutely. You know, and I have to yeah. square that away against the fact that, like, ultimately, the um, sidearm is genuinely one of the coolest pieces of my kit. Um, they are probably the only airsoft replica type that I have ever been tempted to be a collector of. They are a thing I would enjoy having a bunch of around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the primary reason I don't is just that, um, well, partly Phil talks me out of it because he's a good friend. <laughs> um, You're welcome. You know, but partly I, like the last couple of years, I haven't been using them. So my incentive to purchase additional ones has been lower. Um, but, you know, I am looking forward to having it back on my belt, um, you know, partly because it gives me more options in terms of how to run my um, M27, although realistically, I don't see myself changing the muscle velocities that I'm running it at too much. Mm -hmm. Um, partly because to be honest, I don't need to be at the DMR limits for the field to reach out to the length of the play area. So <laughs> the advantage yes. is limited. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, but the, the point, uh, that you made earlier about, you know, like, okay, so I'm running an LMG. Yeah. That does kind of mean I need a sidearm because there are pl places where my alternative will be going. Well, I'm not really allowed to shoot at you so i guess i'm just gonna get shot in the face yeah well and i mean at some of the fields that people in our discord play at you're not even allowed to shoot them indoors right so like you need you need something else yeah well i mean i also can't frankly, go inside a building frankly i don't want to try to room clear with the m249 like well you can't you're not allowed to use it in the village right so yeah, like exactly, it's sort of right? it's like, smooth point know, um but you know one of the things that actually we didn't talk about um the first time we talked about sidearms and is a bit of a factor. And I, we learned about this because of the discord and stuff. We, I don't think we were aware of it at the time, but like you can HPA tap a sidearm or you can run like an AAP one and you can also run it off the same air source. So you can have your, your HPA primary and your HPA secondary, should you want to do that. And when we first recorded this, as you very, very well mentioned at the start, like you, you didn't see yourself using HPA ever. And now here we are. Last week we talked about, was it last week? I think it's last week. We talked about HPA and your fuck, your, excuse me. Uh, we talked about HPA and your, uh, your Colt Navy or whatever, the, <laughs> the cowboy revolver, which is not going to happen. <laughs> uh, um, but 
they, you know, that is also for anyone who was listening last time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I mean, this is something that you could, you could potentially look at doing, which is saying, okay, well, maybe not with your PX4, obviously, but like getting a sidearm that you can HPA and then run off the same source as you're doing right now. Not saying that that's what you should do, but that is an option that really, when we discussed sidearms last time, it was green gas or propane and CO2. That was, yep. was kind of it or a Springer, I suppose. And I mean, like realistically, one of those two. And I mean, funnily, like not because I went out of my way to get it, but just because it was offered as uh, filler for a, for the uh, Evo trade slash sale. I also now have a CO2 Beretta um, M92. And like, uh, it's pretty nice. Like, it's not terrible at all. I still don't know that I want to run a CO2 sidearm just because um, I think too much perhaps about the ouch factor on the other end uh, mm -hmm. for like people I'm playing with. But like, you're, you're dead on about, you know, the possibility of HPA tapping a mag for that or um, of, you know, buying an AAP. Like, it's, I still... Um, I'm going to get told off for this again. I still don't think it's aesthetically my jam. Uh, but like, if I want a uh, a practical argument, you know, if you're like, oh, hey, Pat, what do you think the best airsoft pistol for the kit I'm running right now is? Yeah, yeah. Buy one of those. Buy a holster for it, I guess. I assume you can buy holsters for them. <laughs> um, and I just wants to make fun of you. That's it. That's fair. Uh, and, uh, you know, there you go. Right, like that is a very viable solution in terms of having the most practically effective piece of kit for uh, for the for a for a sidearm, given what else I'm carrying. Um, and it does streamline your whole like your whole kit process, right? Like, I, there's one guy who uh, sent us a, a gameplay video where he was actually doing exactly that. He had two lines off the same tank, and you know that that sort of streamlines all of that for him, which I think is a pretty neat setup. It's, I'm not sure if that's something that I would enjoy myself i don't really know there's a lot of stuff that i thought i would hate including hpa and i don't so anything is possible yeah I mean, um it provides but yeah you, it's definitely unique yeah i mean it provides um like i've seen people here using them as sort of a primary for cqb like faster play um, yeah when you play on the speedball field or whatever yeah yeah and in the village yeah. uh and um like I don't think I'm I'm too lumbering a human for that to be really a utilitarian <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. piece of kit in that way. But like, you know, hook it into my HPA tank, run it. There's definitely practical value there in terms of like, yeah, okay, now I don't have to worry about bringing, uh, you know, green gas or uh, propane to a game. Uh, it also probably means that I can use the same weight of BB because I'm using HPA for both of them um, mm -hmm. without, you know, the, the drawbacks like it also means i have a lot finer control over the uh, muzzle velocity of it in the sense that like you know put propane in murray gun it's going to do the thing it does carry on <laughs> <laughs> yeah right like there's no adapting that it's just so let's talk a little bit now uh, about retention because i think that's something that we 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 touched on a little bit earlier and i think we'll, we'll talk about what you're doing with your px4 in a minute totally one of the things at least for me, one of the opinions that has not changed is that chest retention of your sidearm is not really going to be the thing for Airsoft. Now, unless you're doing like an impression kit or you have a very specific role where, you know, maybe you are in a vehicle or something like that at a Milsim game or whatever, then, you know, absolutely fill your boots, whatever. But for the average person playing the average skirmish, I still very much maintain that having like a cross draw vest or something similar that replaces primary mags with the sidearm is probably not going to be the route that you want to take primarily because primarily because primarily because you want primary mags, right? Like that is going to generally speaking, be your best implement. It's going to be your best tool on the field. Uh, your primary replica is going to be. So you want to have as much ammunition to feed that as possible and replacing easy access of those mags with a um with the secondary is probably not going to be in my opinion the vibe now i have seen john uh set himself up so that he has his 1911 holster on his chest but like tucked in behind his chest rig or something like that where he's not replacing primary mags he's just have it, he has it there that he can and that's okay but what i'm talking about specifically is like those cross draw vests are similar that take out that space 
uh, is not, in my opinion, uh, has not changed on that, which is it's not a good thing to do. So right? interestingly, mine has changed a little on it, but this is a, um, you know, <laughs> this is an ergonomics question. Uh, so um, one of the things I purchased when I was buying stuff for the uh, PS4 is I have a strike plate from Blackhawk that my Serpa can mount to, so I can tuck it in anything with what Molly Webbing or, you know, uh, other analogous things. So currently I've got it on a battle belt, uh, which is a new experience because I've never run a sidearm on my battle belt before. Like previously I wasn't running when I, the last time I ran a sidearm, I didn't own a battle belt. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, like I didn't have the Molly. Uh, and so that's a very different experience in terms of how it rides. Like just it's higher than it used to be. Um, so that's yeah. involved a little bit of like practice and playing around and being like, hmm, what do I do with this? Uh, but uh, funnily, if I look at my chest rig, so I can buy a uh, panel from Tactical Tailor that will add a square panel on my chest of Molly for um, whatever I want to do with it to the chest rig, mm -hmm. right? It's not super expensive. It's a, uh, certainly relative to the chest rig. It's an easily affordable add-on. Um, so if I want to, I can just can't the sidearm on the strike plate and tuck it right here and i don't think that'll interfere with my ability to get to mags oh yeah totally and i think that's different like it's the like, same with johnny like he has it right here and his mags are right for those of you who are listening to the to and not watching my hand is on my like my sternum so he has he has his, his sidearm right here very close to his his like clavicle basically in his sternum and then underneath it he's got his mags that's okay what i'm talking about is like you've got molly panel on your front and then you replace you know maybe two mags here with a sidearm it's like that and especially when you look at like those cross draw vests or similar those are gonna be the mags where you're gonna want to have you your totally. the, it's gonna be the area where you want to have the mags right? totally and i mean like um talking about stuff i could do with my setup like um on my right hand side I don't have mags currently. I've got like an admin pouch and my um, medic pouch, I think, are there. Mm -hmm. I could move those to the battle belt and move the sidearm up there if I wanted to. Um, I don't feel like it would actually help me ergonomically at all, so I'm not gonna. No, definitely not. Um, you know, because realistically those pouches are there because that's basically the last place I'm gonna grab stuff from because I'm indexing mags with the other hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, but and we've I've talked run. about that before, right? Like you want to just do your reloads the same way every time rather than be like, oh, I'm going to put some mags over here. That way when I'm reloading offside, you might never reload offside. So just put them all in the same place and reload the same way every time. But yep. And I like the, the time loss when I'm reloading offside is not really substantial enough for it to be a problem anyway. Especially um, if you're doing admin or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Right. So um, one of the outcomes for me is like I could consider buying that panel and tucking it up there and trying that um you know <laughs> the next time one of the guys goes hey i'm ordering from one of the places that sells it i might just for fun um mm -hmm. it's you know it's not a ton of money whatever but currently it works great where it is i'm pretty happy with it um i have used one of those cross draw vests uh so has phil like we both owned them because when we got into airsoft they were available cheaply and nothing else was <laughs> and they were so cool at the time like you'd look at them be like i got a pistol on my front yeah. and then you're like you know you're like you're playing and the play the way that we were playing we don't know any better and then we move on to other stuff that looks cool and then you look back and you're like mm, i hope those pictures never show up on the internet again and, like, and it's funny because right. like there's a a photo of me like in multicam with a black uh military sweater military surplus sweater and a black tack vest with a cross draw holster on over it and I still think that looks cool. Um, yeah, I know Phil doesn't. <laughs> yeah, not not a vibe. But it's also completely impractical. Like I'm the 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 black sweater and black vest were losing me so much in terms of concealment where we were playing. Um, you know, we were playing at Redcliffe, so like going prone was a regular thing, which meant that if I needed my sidearm, I was lying on it. Like they're <laughs> awful. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure yeah. there are situations where like they're practical or semi-practical. Um, I just don't expect I'll ever be in one of them. Um, so like, I don't really think disliking that's a change. Like I used it until I could afford something I liked better and I have mm -hmm. not looked back and gone, Oh yeah, I should get one of those again. Um, you know, nor have I thought about putting, uh, my sidearm anywhere on the space that currently is occupied by magazines. <laughs> like, you know, um, I, 
don't shoot, you know, as we talked about last time, I don't shoot as much as, as some of the people on my team, but you know, if I need a mag, I want to have a mag. <laughs> totally. Yeah. You know, um, so you have the battle belt, which you were saying is news. So I'm just curious. So you have it on the battle belt and you have it on your, your right side, yep. right? Like, cause you're right-handed just so we're clear. Pat is right-handed. So am I. Um, and so you have, you carry your, your pistol on your replica pistol on your, um, on your battle belt on your right side. Yep. And so that, that's a change. You said that's a change for you, right? So it's a change in that previously I would have been running it on, uh, just like my tactical belt, not the one that is holding my pants up, but the other one. Oh, the um, duty belt. Yeah. Okay. You know, the, yeah, my duty belt. Thank you. Um, and just the fact that it's placed on Molly on the battle belt means it is up two or three inches from where it would have been. And you wouldn't think that would mess with your muscle memory, but it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or at least it messes with mine. Um, so I've been doing a bunch of just like practice transitions and reloads and stuff with it. But in fairness, part of that is because GBBs are fun to play with. Pistols yeah. are fun to play with. Like I, I think um, airsoft pistols are really cool. Personally, they, they're just a thing I enjoy messing around with and owning. Uh, and so... You know, and, and it's a way to scratch the, you know, airsoft itch in the depths of, you know, March and April where there is no world where we get to play other than going to an indoor facility that our gear is not really squared away for. Um, mm -hmm. And frankly, that conflicts with pri previous um, previous things that we are committed to, previous commitments, brains, um, for both of us. <laughs> um, yeah. So... You know, that's just not super likely. So, you know, doing some, you know, reloads and transitions and stuff and just getting to mess around with my kit is scratching the airsoft itch a little bit. Um, it also has the benefit of, you know, I've been going through it and thinking about like, okay, what is positioned where? What do I need to modify or tinker with? You know, like I, I my budget this year for airsoft is going to be spent, you know, primarily on camo. Um, but like, do I want to switch out my radio pouch for a different kind of radio pouch? Uh, do I want to look at, you know, modifying where I'm carrying, if I'm going to be wearing the battle belt every game, should the first aid be on the battle belt rather than on the chest ring? Um, you know, and the answer is, I mean, I'm probably always going to have both of them on once I'm on the field. So probably it doesn't matter, but like, it's worth mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, um, I have currently got two primary mags on the battle belt. I have real estate on the battle belt left. Should I be putting other stuff there? Should I be putting more primary mags on it? You know, uh, do I want to carry a spare mag for my sidearm for the fun of it? Um, yeah. you know, it are the odds like other than playing a game at the end of the day, that's intentionally designed to run us all out of ammo for the fun of it. Am I going to be using a second mag for my sidearm? Like, yeah, never. You know, do I have uh, a nice, like, high-quality mag pouch for that spare mag and the spare mag? Yes. Will it probably end up on my kit? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, like... And, I mean, it's not like GBB mags are super cheap either, right? So, it is there is a bit of an investment. Not, they're not, like, they're not breaking the bank on them. Oh, yeah, but it's totally. definitely, like, I, I wouldn't know, it's an investment. I wouldn't buy... I mean, so I ran the Glock for five years. Mm -hmm. I did not buy a second mag for it. Um the px4 came with three mags so i have spare mags for it um you know would i be looking to spend my airsoft budget on an extra mag for my px4 this year um you know or frankly almost any other sidearm um you know i i have look because i because i got grumbled at um you know uh, and I mean that lovingly. I uh, I did go look into the AAP a bit more uh, so that I can back my my views of it. Uh, and I have to say, like, it's an impressive piece of kit in terms of how it functions. Um, I just like other aesthetics better. Um, That's fair. You know, but like... It's not, it's too, it's too big for you. That's the problem. Yeah, it needs to be clear, smaller. Clearly. If it was like half the size, you'd be all over it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> clearly I need just like the sawed off barrel version. Um... I think, though, you know, one thing I wanted to come back to, you mentioned this as well, like, you use a um, a Serpa, right, a Black Hawk Serpa. I use a Black Hawk Serpa as well. And there's, like you were mentioning, like, there's a lot of commotion, or there has been a lot of commotion about, like, real steel, blah, blah, blah. This is not real steel, so I literally don't care. One thing that I learned really early is that I found that fabric holsters, like the Omnivore or something like that, uh, had a tendency to drop my kit when I'm running. So I had like a fabric holster that I wore on my leg. And the first time I, I took a run, my pistol went flying, 
right? Or falling down a cliff and the pistol goes flying because it fell out of the holster. Because you have to put it in a state where it's not actually in retention if you want to draw it in a hurry. Which at the time, I was like, well, you're always going to want to draw it in a hurry. But in reality, I'm like, okay, well, now I know that's not quite the case. That being said, I think there's no there's no real reason why you can't run a Safari Land or a Serpa or a Kydex or whatever else for Airsoft. And that will be totally fine. Now, I wouldn't recommend carrying your sidearm on your leg. I, I had negative experiences with that. Carrying it on your hip is, is better. But having whatever you decide, like having a, a point of retention, for me, that is a positive like lock in place. That means that unless you depress some sort of lever, it's not coming out, I think is really helpful because it means that if I fall down, which I have a tendency of doing, as we've talked about before, uh, it's not going to go flying. It will retain on my person. And is that because I'm some some hardcore guy who wants to be able, able to? No, it's because I don't want to lose it, right? Totally. If you take a tumble down a cliff and then you have to go find it, like that sucks. I mean, um, well, I mean so like even there's just- There's a lot to that. Right? Even just, you know, like, um, and this, this applied when we were playing Redcliffe, and I think it applies to Frontline as well. Uh, there's mm-hmm. sufficient bushes around here that will try to pull it out of your fabric holster and sometimes succeed that it becomes a pain in the ass, right? Yeah, I'm not um, expecting some player to jump me and try and dry my side. Like, no, of course not. Although I did do that to Matt one time, our Matt, uh, at a game where I'm like, I need your sidearm because I'm, and I just went and grabbed it. But like, realistically speaking, right, in nine times out of 10, like, it's, I find, unless you have some other form of retention, like a lanyard perhaps or something, it is going to find its way out if you have it in a state where you could draw it in, in, in a hurry and it's not positively locked in there. So that's why I really like just a basic Serpa. Yeah, and like, and uh, they've been really great for us yeah, I think, I mean, over the years. And like I, to be clear, um, like I looked into um, like Kydex from various places uh, that do custom Kydex sort of stuff um, when I was looking into what I was going to get for the PX4. And um, <laughs> spoiler, it is hard to get holsters for PX4. <laughs> um so uh, there's some of it for me is just like, oh, my options are limited, um, you know, but I have used um, or like messed around with, uh, I think Cal has a Safari Land. Um, he certainly has something. I know Matt definitely had one. You know, yeah. He certainly has something that's not a Serpa that has like, um, you know, a thumb retention and a um, index finger retention. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, those are great, right? It's, it's not a uh, buy a Serpa because I think they're the best thing. Uh, it's, I am used to using them and, you know, uh, genuinely, you know, if I were, if I had been looking for a holster for something that I could get another variation on, I probably would have tried something different, not out of any dislike for what I've used just because why not? Um, you know, in some ways, like for where we play, like a really tight friction fit Kydex is probably actually quite a fine solution. Um, but I'm going to pick something like Phil was just saying that locks the uh, the sidearm physically in because having it bounce out of my holster when I was using a fabric holster sucked. And I don't ever want that to happen again. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like we talked about many times, I think, over the over the years as well, like, you know, sidearms are like a, a money pit when it comes to upgrades and there's so much you can, you can do with them. And we're not going to rehash that because we have talked about it in the past and um, but, but I, I do think that, you know, if you are like Pat was saying earlier, like if you're at a point in your airsoft sort of experience where you have a couple replicas, you know, they absolutely are something fun that you should pick up and they are engaging and they, they keep for, for me, like they keep some interest. Like I love handling sidearms. I think that they're super fun. Um, but I, you know, I really feel that over, over the years, sort of my, necessity for them i feel has gone down but also my respect for them has gone up in the sense of you know when it is a tool that you need it's it's good to have and there's a lot of situations you can find yourself in where it is kind of good to have them but also there's other ways that you can solve those problems it's just a different tool in the toolkit that's not more or less valid than than anything else right i really do feel that if you're the kind of person who feels like they, they want to carry one and you're going to use it all the time, or you do make an effort to use it all the time. I mean, this is also a game. Like if that's the way that you want to play, then, then that's excellent, right? That's, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. And you can be a very effective player 
with just a sidearm, depending on the kind of game you're playing. If you're showing up at Wilson, Nilsim West, which Nilsim West, excuse me, with just a sidearm, well, they probably won't let you play. But regardless, like that's not going to be the place for it, right? But if you're playing at CQB City, where Matt in California plays all the time, you might be able to get away with using a sidearm and do just fine. And that's okay too, right? I think we've, I think we have, since we recorded that episode many years ago, our view of what Airsoft actually looks like around the world has expanded to a tremendous amount. And we've been exposed to so many different uh, points of view Then perhaps my stance on it has softened, I think maybe over the years, and it's not as quite as hardcore yeah, I think, or hard line. I, I think a say. lot of it partly is, yeah, just we have um, become more inclined to go, yeah, there are a lot of use cases. If you look at something and go, this fits how I'm playing and does the things I want it to do, great, do it. 10 out of 10, yeah. you know, um, in, you know, the, I have the practical of like, I need to stop buying tiny guns, <laughs> um, you know, uh, excuse me while I go close the tabs that I have open of tiny guns. <laughs> um, it's more than 20 guys. It's more than 20. I don't have more than 20 tabs about tiny airsoft guns open. Look, don't believe look I put several Continue. qualifiers in that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i mean i think uh our stance has softened in the sense that it's become a lot more about like you do what you find fun and what you find effective you know and mm -hmm. try to find whatever the best balance for you is between that because i mean that's really what we're doing yeah absolutely and there's just a lot of fun to be had with them i think something we didn't really talk about i think the first first time we went around uh, you know, using them is fun too, right? And so if you are in a situation where you know, you're like, I would have a lot of fun right now if I could just use my, my sidearm, do it. Why not? Like, is it going to be effective? I mean, depending on the situation you're in, you may not want to do that thing. But like, I think about a lot of games where we're playing in the village. I'm like, man, it would be fun to whip around that corner with my pistol and just blast some dude. So I'm going to try doing it. Why not? Yeah, I mean, right? Like, like, when the stakes are low, like, just enjoy yourself. I think would be would be the word of uh, word of choice there. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you're there to have fun, and you know, I mean, like, if it's a, a milsim scenario or something, you know, or like something super competitive. Okay, fair enough. Or Iron Horse. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think that is a milsim thing. <laughs> well, I suppose so. Yeah, but. Um, you know, maybe don't try to be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to run my sidearm. But like, mm -hmm. if you're like us and you're playing a lot of, you know, weekend skirmishes uh, at the same field, which I think is a commonality for a lot of airsofters, you know, just running your pistol for a game will alter the way the game feels for you. And that in and of itself can be fun. Definitely. You know, and if you have enough players who own them, you can also do like, hey, everyone play a pistol and do pistol games. And that's an entirely separate daft thing to do that I enjoy. Yeah, we've done that a few times. Well, guys, hopefully you found this re us rehashing this topic entertaining. If this is something that you'd like us to, to do more of in the future, where we look back at some of the topics that we've talked about and sort of feel, feel out whether we feel the same way or what have you, uh, definitely let us know. I think I'm, uh, you know, like I am, very much itching to play some airsoft. Uh, it's uh, we're almost getting to that time here in Newfoundland, so hopefully it will be soon. Um, so, and at that point, we'll have some more stories to regale you with. But I guess until next week, this is really all we've got for you. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate you, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, you know, uh, as always, you know our Discord is there. You guys should consider joining it, just because it's a fantastic community. It's a really good place to uh, share stories about airsoft, share knowledge. Uh, you can join the uh, people who are going to shame me until I buy an AEP to as penance for uh, talking uh, talking shit about it last time, throwing shade. So uh, that'll give you some fun as well. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Take care, everyone.